Hi, my name is Rogério Louro, and I will talk on behalf of Professor Slash Santos Silva. Today I'm going to talk about fungi and their role in the future of the Mediterranean landscape. As in all ecosystems, Mediterranean forest sustainability is largely ensured by hidden plant partners and soil dwelling microorganisms, particularly fungi. In fact, mycorrhizal symbiosis is the most ancient widespread form of fungal symbiosis with plants. These symbiotic associations likely appear during the initial land colonization by plants and are present in all terrestrial habitats, occurring in over 90% of all known plant families. Mycorrhizal fungi can connect entire communities of plants, enabling them to exchange information, increasing moisture and nutrient uptake capacity by extending a plant's root system up to a thousand times. Unable to produce carbohydrates, mycorrhizal fungi depend on host plants to survive. In return, the fungi protect the plants from various pathogens and from several environmental stresses like drought, salinity, nutrient deficiency, presence of heavy metals, unsuitable soil pH resulting in an overall improvement in the thickness of the host plant. In short, fungi are an essential component in all forest ecosystems, even more in Mediterranean ecosystems that are characterized by regular disturbance regimes, such as drought and fire. Throughout times, the Mediterranean ecosystems have been shaped by land use and its characteristic climate with extended drought combined with high temperatures. In this harsh environment, the plant fungi mutualistic associations are fundamental to mitigate the climate effects. Hundreds of microsymbionts thrive in the Mediterranean, ensuring plant survival and ecosystem sustainability. However, future extreme weather conditions resulting from climate changes will further increase the risk of wildfires. Furthermore, there are several evidences supporting the intuitive view that progressive land abandonment is changing fire dynamics, particularly in Mediterranean ecosystems, decreasing fire regulation capacity and increasing the number and intensity of fires. The negative effects of fire are enhanced by poor soils, and if you look at the actual Portuguese panorama, it is a scary one. Since our country is dominated by poor soils and scourged by forest fires. From this perspective, if nothing is done to revert this tendency, we cannot expect much more than a total degradation of the soil. However, not only climate and fuel amount regulate the fire regimes, also, of the utmost importance is the continuity and compactness of flammable material, both horizontal and vertical. The current solution to minimize wildfires is the total reduction of biomass in these non farm lands, with the removal of all shrubs and vegetation higher than 20 centimeters. If this might help in the short term, it does lead to a higher exposure of the soil to drought and erosion. This soil degradation will in turn reduce soil productivity, leading to further land abandonment and fueling back on climate change. If vegetation control is important to prevent fire hazards, it also exposes soil trail erosion and desertification, reducing drastically soil biodiversity and endangering future reforestation attempts. We have to keep in mind that soil is a non-renewable good. This means that soil loss and degradation is not recoverable within a human lifespan. Its preservation is essential for a sustainable future. So there is an urgent need to stop land degradation and establish frameworks for sustainable soil management systems. On top of that, the reforestation programs are in its majority not sustainable, 
they request too much water, fertilization, and time to, re to result. Overall, too much money and low return. And there is often the risk that soil erosion and degradation are gone beyond the point of successful traditional reforestation, leading to failures both ecological and economic. Reforestation programs are not enough to solve the problem, mainly because they rely on monocultures and degraded soils is not suitable to nurture adult trees. So we ask landowners to remove the shrubs and ground vegetation to prevent fire. But why not asking them to manage the autochthonous shrubs instead of removing it? Make sure that fire contiguity is broken when needed, but do not entirely remove vegetation, thus protecting the soil from further erosion and degradation. Basically, with this thought-provoking questions, we want to put all of us thinking on alternatives. Diversity is the key in biology, and is likely also the key for reaching solutions. For the combined synergy of different strategies, we might reach the aim. So let us go back to our shrubs and their ecological relevance. Why use rock roses to recover damaged soils? Because they are well adapted to the Mediterranean climate and they host more than 200 microsymbionts that are capable of spreading and establishing a wood wide web connecting all the root systems, including shrubs, trees, and some herbs. Moreover, they are major, major pollen producer species, enhancing pollinating insect diversity. In short, rock roses are a biodiversity boosting agents. Can we reach a balanced solution? What are the options? As a starting point, Reversion of land abandonment is more likely to be achieved when there is a trade-off. In mainland Portugal, the majority of the rural, rural and forest areas are under private ownership. Seems rather intuitive that if, if an appropriate land management is to be achieved, it implies a return to the landowners. Nowadays, soil poverty, land abandonment, and climate changes are leading to an increase in the frequency and intensity of fires, creating a perfect storm, which in turn will result in a near future in soil erosion, biodiversity loss, and even desertification scenarios. With our ecological background and aiming to preserve fungal diversity as a means to maintain ecosystem health and balance, we thought in a different solution. Plant pioneer rock roses Mycorrhizae with desert tropical species. Through the introduction of these incredible symbiotic partners, we can simultaneously recover damaged soil faster with no water or fertilizer, fertilizer inputs. Plus, we can pick edible truffle fortifications whose values by far surpasses that of the burnt timber. We are a team of three biologists with different research backgrounds and research interests but who are worried with the future, and in particular with land abandonment and desertification, soil erosion and decreased fire regimes that we are already witnessing in the Mediterranean area. Can you join your expertise with ours? Are you a fire dynamic expert with the tools to analyze the impact of rock roses on fire risks? Do you have the knowledge on how the shrubs should be maintained to care for the continuity in relation to fire hazard? Are you a soil expert that can further analyze the impact of the rock roses and other shrubs on soil health? How about biodiversity, an ecological web that depends on these shrubs? Other ideas? Please contact us. Our rock roses can indeed recover damaged soils and at the same time produce desert truffles, which give the needed socioeconomic turnover to landowners. Thank you for your attention. We expect your valuable feedback so that we can keep working to maintain the world winner.